my signal. So um, again, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, greetings from World Education in Boston. I'm Sandy Goodman, the director, as I said, of the Sabes PD Center for Education and Career Planning, and I'm here with my colleague, Ben Bruno, the instructional technologist at World Education, and in a moment or two, I'll introduce you to Carol Clymer, our main presenter for today. <coughs> So we're here for part one of a two-part session on designing integrated education and training, tips and tools for success. This is a, a webinar we've got planned to help prepare you to, to, for you to learn more about Carol and about the great information she has to share with us on May 9th, but also to get your mind focused on thinking about designing integrated education and training and uh, will be uh, sending you off today with a few activities and pre-session assignments so that you're tuned into your regional labor market data and beginning to think about particular occupations that might be a good fit for IET and also jobs that are available for people with training in those occupations. And we'll be asking you to do some prep work and bring that information to the session. So that's mostly what this is about, introducing you to IET, to Carol and her approach, and also getting you uh, ready for, for the face-to-face -face session. So um, in this two-part session, you'll, get, you'll receive guidance and tools you'll need to conduct labor market research, develop partnerships, and design a curriculum for a comprehensive IET program. And we've designed this session for ideally for teams of program staff, uh, director and coordinator, instructors, and even maybe an advisor. Um, and if you're coming solo for, in your program, then that's okay too. But we're really going to give you a hands-on session so that you can begin to learn about the concepts, learn about some processes and tools, and also really begin to plan or continue planning or revise an already implemented IET program under the guidance and expertise that Carol has to share with us. So that's, that's what we're about over this next month or so. And before we launch into what we're planning to do today, I'm going to um, ask my colleague, Ben, just to make sure you all know how to use this WebEx platform so that you can participate and communicate fully. Take it away, Ben. Thanks, Andy. So uh, hopefully you all can see uh, the slides and hear our voices. Um, and the way we'd like you all to participate today uh, is via the chat box and also at some point uh, we would also like you to speak if you can. And so in order to participate via the chat box, the chat box uh, should be on the right side of your screen. If you do not see the chat box, please look to the top right or bottom right if you're on a Mac. Um, look for a list of icons um, and it should, the chat icon looks like a chat bubble and it says chat underneath and by clicking that it will toggle the chat on and off. So if you find the chat dis distracting, you can toggle it off. But if, you need, if you'd like to make a, a chat or a comment or a question, um, you toggle that button on and make sure when you send your chat, as I've indicated at the bottom of the slide, make sure you use that pull down window uh, where it says send to and make sure it says all participants. Um, not all attendees, which is a, a different thing. Um, and all part, if you send to all participants, we'll be able to see your participation and everyone will be able to see your question and we'll make sure that we get to it. Um, if you would like to uh, speak over the phone, over audio, uh, you can raise your hand to speak. The raise hand button should appear on the participant window which also can be toggled on and off just like the chat window, uh, right in the same area. And at the bottom of that participant window should be a raise hand button. That may look something like uh, the one on this slide. Um, we're recording today, so you don't have to feel the need to take copious notes. Um, and uh, I think that's it for me, Sandy. Great, thanks, Ben. Thank and we'll send out uh, the slides uh, after this session, so you'll have some of the links and you'll have a copy of the uh, assignment instructions. And as Ben said, we'll be recording. So if you have colleagues who are planning to join you on May, May 9th but weren't able to attend today, we hope you'll have a chance to prep together, but you can also share the webinar. We'll be sharing the webinar recording with them and you also can share it as well. And on that note, I'll re remind you of this at the end, but if you have folks in your program who have not signed up yet, we are getting full, but we still have some spaces open for, for the face-to-face -face session in May, so uh, let them know and I'll be sharing the calendar um, link at the, end of the, at the end of the session as well. 
So without further delay, I want to get us going and introduce Carol. Carol Clymer is the co-director of the Institute for the Study of Adult Literacy and also of the Goodling Institute for Research in Family Literacy. I will let, us, let her tell you a little bit more about her, but we are so lucky to be able to bring her here to Massachusetts from Pennsylvania and where she has been developing expertise there and really in national initiatives um, for many years. She has over 40 years of experiencing, experience managing and evaluating programs to improve the education and employment prospects of dislocated, low-income, and low-skilled individuals and has extensive experience developing curriculum and workforce development guides. So without, uh, again, without any delay, Carol, I'm going to pass it over to you. And you just let me know when you want me to advance the slides, or I'll start here. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, so as um, Sandy said today, um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, labor market information that you can use to um, prepare for developing IETs. And um, I just, um, I also want to add that I work at Penn State University and um, a little bit about how um, we, uh, I came to this work with IETs. Um, we actually got a grant from our, um, uh, our local um, uh, workforce development um, provider, the Central PA Workforce Development Coalition. And they were the ones who really wanted to learn more about IETs and wanted to have all their Title I um, providers work with Title II providers to um, develop IETs. And so when we work together May 9th, um, we're going to work with a guide that was developed in cooperation um, with Central Pennsylvania Workforce Development. Corporation. And then today, we're just going to do a um, little bit of preliminary work um, uh, to get ready for the IETs. And um, I'm going to help you um, uh, become familiar with some labor market resources that can inform the development of the IETs. And um, we'll actually, you know, walk through these resources and look for um, potential areas that you might focus IETs. And um, maybe by the time you're finished with the assignment, you might have an idea of an IET that could be explored for development, a new one, or you might have some idea about how to refine one that you've already um, uh, been working on. Um, and then this is all to help us prepare for the May 9th workshop. We will take the um, assignment information that we use today and talk about it at the workshop. So next slide, please. And I'd like to um, know um, a little bit from you about who is here. And if you could, in the chat, um, could you tell us what your role is, what program you work with, and your organization? And you know what? I made a mistake. Uh, <laughs> I had replaced organization for program, and then I was meant to put, uh, tell us if you have an IET already in, in play, in, if you're already implementing one. Yep. That's what, so, yeah. Yeah. Sorry if you, about that. <laughs> ask, if you could just add, do you have any IET experience? If you've worked on one and you know, what occupational area is it in, or if it, you're new to them, um, or if you've been thinking about them but you really haven't done too much yet, just give us a little bit of info. And remember Ben's lesson that you should make sure that the send to box is, at, is selected at all participants so all of us can read about what you're doing. Go ahead and get started with the chat. We'll stand by for a moment of silence while you write. So we have the Adult Education Program Coordinator and Advisor at Boston Ch Chinatown Neighborhood Center. And not Working on an IET yet, thanks. Ben, it's not really telling who, the, who it is. Am I not you'll see the You'll see the faint writing above, uh, everybody can see it. So above what Shirley, Shirley wrote, hi, I'm an adult ed program coordinator, and in more faint writing, it says from Shirley Doan, and now we see from Carol Ladard, and you'll see it's, a, it's fainter writing, but you should be able to see it. And okay. it looks like a lot of folks are just giving their name anyway, so. Okay. Do you want to go through those, Sandy? I'm just going to 
going to invite folks to scan it and read for a minute, and we can summarize as people are as people are writing. Oh, I see now. Okay. And so we can see some people are just beginning to work on IETs, uh, one in advanced manufacturing, uh, Webster's at the end of their second year, um, other programs are just writing IET into their, their, their recent grant proposal and hope, hope to um, begin developing and implementing. Somebody's a Penn State grad. <laughs> Terry yeah, Stanford. hi there, Terry. <laughs> so we've heard from a few folks, uh, Boston, Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Association, West Webster Adult Ed, Cape Cod Community College, but there are 12 of, you, 12 of you on, so we'll wait a few more minutes to hear who else is here and what, what you're working on. Customer service is one of the IETs that Boston Chinatown Neighborhood Center is working towards. And, and no shame in being uh, signing up for this just because you want to understand more what IET is. Um, we recognize that there will be folks who are a couple years in and want to improve and refine or add new occupations, and others who are, you know, starting to plan, and others who just want to learn more about what it's about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, we at Penn State, we run a direct service program, and we've been trying to um, work on an IET for a couple of years now. and we get down the road and um, sometimes, you know, we plan them and we don't, you know, get, have the students that, you know, can enroll in them. So there, there's a lot of um, things that have to get, come together for an IET. So it's, it's a, it's, it's a very, um, I, I like to say the stars have to align. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, a lot of there's a lot of moving parts and, and we'll talk a lot about that on, on May 9th. So I think we'll go ahead, Carol. I think we've heard from everybody. Okay. So just so we're on all on the same page, um, you know, IETs have been around for, you know, a while. Um, many of you are probably familiar with the IBEST model or maybe the Accelerating Opportunities um, uh, Project Initiative uh, where IETs were used extensively. Um, but we are talking about uh, the WIOA definition of an IET, and it's it's a little bit different than either IBEST or, or the Accelerating Opportunities. And um, it is, you know, a, a service approach that provides adult education and literacy activities. They need to be con done concurrently and contextually um, along with workforce preparation activities and workforce training um, for a specific occupation or occupational cluster for the purpose of educational and career advancement. So there's like three components that are uh, essential to the IET's adult education and literacy, workforce preparation, and workforce training. And they also have to be part of a career pathway and have a single set of learning objectives. Next slide, please. And then um, new uh, are the IETs for EL Civics. Um, again, the IET for EL Civics, uh, the IET part is the same as the WIOA definition that I just mentioned, um, but you also do the EL Civics along with the IET. And this is a separate um, dedicated funding uh, source in Title II, and IE IETs are required. Um, in Massachusetts, you've been piloting um, um, IET, the, it's called the Integrated English Literacy and Civics Education, and IET, you've been piloting those, and so I think you're a little bit ahead of the curve on, on doing IETs for EL Civics. Next slide, please. So, you know, as I mentioned uh, um, just a bit ago, there's three required components of an IET. There's the adult education activity. This is where you either, you know, do literacy, adult basic education, um, English language acquisition, um, integrated English literacy, and um, 
civics education. And you can also do, um, with the new WIOA definition, you can do IETs in, in the workplace. So that is an allowable um, activity. There's also then the workforce preparation activity that's done simultaneously. Um, it's either done in the workforce training or in the um, adult education class, but it has to be done at the same time. And these are really um, helping people with employability skills um, and getting ready for work and the workplace culture. And then finally, there's the workforce training. Um, it is, that is a specific um, occupation of training. Um, you work with another provider to provide that workforce training as a rule. Um, in Massachusetts, you have um, a requirement that, that your workforce training lead to an industry recognized credential. Um, and uh, you, of course, you have to choose a training provider. It, depending on the funding that you're using, um, if it's Title I funding, your training provider, um, as a rule, has to be on the approved provider list. Next slide, please. So, you know, putting it all together, this is kind of a visual of the, the definition. You have these three different components, adult education, um, workforce preparation, and the workforce training component. Those all happen concurrently and um, contextually together. And then um, you have a single set of learning objectives for each of those three components. Um, the learning objectives are supposed to identify specific adult education content and workplace, workforce preparation content, workforce training competencies, and um, they are all supposed to work together to um, support a step on a career pathway. We're going to talk a lot more about these different components and the single set of objectives on May 9th. But today, we're going to focus more on um, how you work with the local state plans and how you identify jobs that are appropriate for um, your IETs. Next slide, please. So um, what's really absolutely critical with an IET development and the process is that you start with the jobs. Um, an IET isn't something that is like an afterthought or an IET isn't done um, just to get some training. Um, uh, you know, you have a training and say, oh, let's just do an IET because there's a, a training. There's a real intentionality around um, IETs connecting to a specific job and the fact that you have a, 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 a group of people who um, need either basic skills or language in order to succeed in the training that is related to the job. That's kind of how the moving parts all come together. And um, in many cases, you are looking at jobs that um, have project projected job growth um, that are aligned with your local plans and um, that are aligned with uh, the needs of employers. Um, with IETs, you can actually do them in, um, you can do them in association with customized training, or you can do them with on-the-job training. They don't just have to be with um, a training provider done at a community college. There's, there's different um, scenarios or different kind of situations where you can uh, do the IET training in connection with actual um, workplace situations. And then, of course, um, you want to be working with jobs that um, enable people to advance in careers. And in, again, in, in Massachusetts, it's really important to um, identify jobs that have family sustaining wages. Um, and are there any questions at this point? Or Sandy, do you want to emphasize anything before we, we move on? I don't know what I think this is a great place to pause for questions and um, take a minute. You can write a question in the chat. You can raise your hand and we'll be able to see that and, and Ben can un unmute you. But I just want to re-emphasize 
uh, something that Carol said a moment ago and that I just put in the chat is that um, w she's moving very fast through some very complicated concepts because we're just setting the stage for the uh, May 9th where you'll, well, you'll get a chance to really dig in deeply into these concepts. So if you feel like you're going too fast and you're not ready for May 9th, don't worry, this is, that's what the whole day will be about is really untangling what do we mean by, you know, contextualize and concurrent, what do we mean by single set of learning objectives, what, you know, what do we mean by workforce preparation activities. So, um, so don't worry and hang on for this fast ride. <laughs> and then yeah, between, the I, the, <laughs> between the activity and what we do in May, you'll be, you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Sandy. I, I realized I was going pretty fast. Um, and so I, I, we can go back to if there's any specific questions, but, um, all of that was just a way to kind of introduce what the different components of an IET exactly. are. And, um, you know, that the fact that we are, um, you know, doing this in the context of um, WIOA and that there's, um, you know, the really important part that we want to really focus on today is the fact that we start with the jobs and the occupations and then we work back from there. Um, to organize the IET that has the adult education piece, that has the workforce preparation piece, and that has the workforce training piece. That's the occupational training exactly. part. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Then, from what I can tell, there aren't any hands raised. Um, correct? I don't see. So yeah, is that no, correct? No hands, but no. Yeah. Okay. So let's go on, okay. Carol, um, and then. Oh. Um, so actually, Joyce just raised her hand. So. Oh, go ahead. You'll unmute Joyce, her then. Go ahead. No, I just want to know if you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> now we can. Oh, now we can. Now you can. Oh, okay. okay. All right, okay. great. I really don't have a question. Everything's great so far. <laughs> okay, great. Now we're going to mute you again, Joyce. So if you do have a question, just raise that hand again sure. and we'll... Okay, thank you. All right, so Carol, I'll go ahead. Here we go. And I'll try to slow down a little bit. I. I... Oh, when I didn't mean you were going too fast, I just meant this isn't the time for you to dig, dig deeper in case people are wondering why you're not. <laughs> um, okay, so so this is all in preparation for May the 9th. Um, the, this is the assignment, one, part of the assignment, the first part of the assignment. We want you to identify two high growth demand occupations listed in your local WIOA plans. And this is the link to your local we owe a plans. In a second, we're going to kind of walk through a random plan. It's not a random plan, but it's a, a plan that I picked randomly, um, the Brockton <laughs> plan. And it's a very well-developed, a um, lot of work plan. Um, so we're going to walk through some, just some aspects of that plan so you can get a feel for, you know, what's in the local plan. and. Um, some of the labor market in information that you might um, want to use. There's a whole, whole lot more than what I picked out for um, today. Um, but you're going to go and, you know, look at your local plan and identify two high growth demand occupations. And then um, you're going to do an ONET search for a summary report related to those occupations. We're going to go through how to look at the ONET um, and find the ONET summary report today as well. And then, um, you know, just print out and read your summary report for each occupation and bring it with you on May 9th. And as, as I said earlier, we'll use them um, um, at the uh, workshop. And then um, think about these questions when, as you're going through um, your plans. Um, what are occupations are identified in your plan? Um, what occupations might be appropriate for an IET program. And, you know, here I did go through this part a little um, fast. I, I think everybody really needs to um, remember when you're doing the IET, the reason for doing it is because you have a population of um, individuals or potential job seekers or your own students, you know, target population that um, can't succeed in the workforce training without having the basic skills part of the program, that particular component, or they need uh, English language to succeed in the training. That, that is a critical reason for doing the IET. Um, so do you have um, 
you know, is the IET appropriate and what occupations might be um, appropriate for the IET? And then what specific jobs are available that align to the occupation and would be appropriate for your students and the IET program? Any questions about that? That's where it gets to me a little bit complicated. <laughs> All right, I don't I don't see any. Okay, so let's go on and starting with our local WIOA plans. And as I said, I I just picked Brant Brockton. I just you know went down through the um, the list, and Brockton just jumped out at me. So that's the one I picked. And um, the oh, local oh, plan. Oh, no, that's okay. Yeah. So here is. You can see all of the different um, links to all the local plans in Massachusetts. And um, they, they all pretty much have the same type of information, the same types of charts that, you know, look at labor market information and, you know, statistics and, um, you know, population and, you know, changes in the local area. And all you do is click on the link for your local plan if you haven't uh, looked at it already. Um, you know what, I might ask, how many of you are familiar with your local plan? Uh, why don't you go ahead and raise your hand if you've looked at your local plan and, and you've got some. And yeah, got oh, quite a few. Yeah, yeah, so the, that's, a, that's a really good place to start to kind of get um, information about um, what occupations you might be pursuing for the IET. All right, thanks. All right, let me go back to your slide. Okay, now I've just okay. taken some screenshots. So, so this is kind of the, I, I see as the big picture of what um, the Southwest region uh, sector makeup is. You know, Brockton is, is one local area in that region, there's more. But um, this kind of gives you a pretty good visual um, related to the, you know, the sectors and the employment opportunities in those sectors. This is as of 2016. And you'll, you know, just see that the sector is represented by its size and a little bit by color. And then there's the name in the sector and how many Jobs are in the sector, so retail trade has 77,441. And then um, over all the way over to um, the far right lower hand corner, um, some of those you can't really see. They, they didn't have enough space. They were too small to put um, how many jobs were in them. So those are right below. They are um, kind of outlined in, um, in red there. Um, you know, arts has 10,163 jobs. So um, it's just a way to kind of get familiar with this sector map. Um, which, which in, um, what's the largest area of employment on this sector map? Anybody, you can just put it in the chat or raise your hand. What's the largest area of employment? Where's the most jobs? Healthcare, right? Yep. <laughs> Healthcare and social assistance here. And then, um, what's the smallest? Where are there the fewest jobs? You might have to look in the red box. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Carol, Carol's got it. Yep. Joyce, agriculture. Yeah, that's not surprising, is it? Either one of them, right? All right, so that just gives you the big picture of employment in the region, not particularly in Brockton. Um, and then um, going to uh, the next slide, um, this is a slide that tells you um, about the top 15 occupations and how many people they were employing those occupations um, in 2015, right? So let's just take a look at this slide. Um, take some time to kind of study what's here. 
And what do you see? You can type it in the chat or very heavy in retail, yeah. Anything else? Most of the jobs require a high school diploma, yep, or below. So you don't, it's a high school report, yeah, only. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Terry. Anything else? What do you think about family sustaining wage jobs? I mean, we don't have the any information here about how much people are paid, but any thoughts about that? Okay, so Carol says, the occupation most of our non-English speaking students are low wages if they work for someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, good point, Claudine. Education is clearly the key for living wage jobs. The one and the one registered nurse, right? That, that's pretty <laughs> uh, high up on the list there. Um, customer service spans many of the jobs. Yeah, there's only one job in the whole list that requires a certificate or associates, the nursing assistants. And I think those are a lot of the jobs that people are doing, um, you know, for their IETs. And so, we're, and, and it's certainly um, an occupational area that Brockton and, you know, this, this local plan focuses on, and we'll see that a little bit in a, in, in a, a short while. Anything else about um, this chart you, Want to point out? All right, so let's move on to the next one then. Oh, family sustaining with BA and higher, and only two with that requirement. Yep, you're right. Okay, so this is a little bit of a different slide. I, I really, I, I kind of liked it. It, it, it's, um, and I, and it is related there. When, when you go into your local plans. You'll see, and your regional and your local plans, you'll see that there's different sector industry groups. So they they in the in the Brockton one have you know another one I think on manufacturing and you know they they take the different um, sectors and and they do make this kind of chart with it to show you you know the number of um, different types, the types of different businesses on the left, so the number of establishments or the number of, you know, places that employ people in healthcare. And so, um, you know, the largest um, employer of people in healthcare, which is, again, no surprise, I think, is the, um, you know, the general medical and surgical hospitals. And there's 16 of them. And then um, they employ 18,373. Um, and then um, individual and family services, um, that's the next one. They employ 16,898. And um, you know, I'm just looking here now at the black box there. I'm, I, I, I admit, I do not know what that box represents. Anybody have a guess on that one? Sandy, do you know? Um, there may be something. No, yeah, there may um, be. Go ahead. The number of establishments there? Uh, for uh, I don't know why it would be. So on the top left. Oh, why is it yeah. black? But yeah. Hmm. Uh, I, I think it's gray. The number of establishments is—is is that what you're talking about? The, uh -huh. 
Oh, okay. I just think it's so tiny right here. Yeah, 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 yeah. Compared yeah. to the, yeah, the, you the are the right. Yeah. Numbers, yeah. Yeah. That's, it's that's this ex- writing in gray, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I guess you couldn't, they couldn't represent 16, but they can represent 8,076. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that's, um, and they can represent 597 down there for the offices of, of physicians. Right, good. It takes a group to figure out. <laughs> The healthcare industry chart, uh, and then you get a sense of you know the different average weekly wages for the sector in these groups on the um, the far right. So you know that that that's not surprising either. You know the ones where the average wage, wages are higher, like in hospitals, are of course going to have a lot of very educated staff. Um, the same is true for physicians and and then in the home health care or the nursing care facilities, the individual um, family services, those are lower 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 skilled and lower wage well, I don't know let that lower skilled take that away, but they're lower wage jobs okay and then it 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 tells you um you know who are the all the way on the far right, you know the employers. Um, you know that have the the most job postings in in the last twelve months, so that's helpful. So could, can anybody? Um, oh, could oh I see. Could anybody think about how you might use this um, chart to inform your IETs? Feel free to chat or respond or raise your hand. Yeah, which which jobs are family sustaining? Uh huh. Thanks, Fred. Any other way? Or there at least the sectors you can figure that out here. Well, one of the things I think about is that when we we'll, we'll talk, I know a lot more about um, about. Um, how to get industry expertise and input into curriculum development and what the uh you know the the skills needed for the job both the the, the technical skills but also the workforce and employability skills now that we know who some of these larger employers are then we can focus you know those are employers that would have large hr depart or developed hr departments presumably and may have folks who would serve as industry experts for us or you know um sit on an advisory group or just help us to design the program. Yeah, yeah, and Car- Carol just said that too. It's, it's to connect with the top employers to identify skills and needs. Yeah, that's that that is um, that's that's a really helpful part of this um, this chart. I think. Great, great. All right, let's move on to the next one. So this this one, you know, I put in there just kind of. It's not only about healthcare, right? And we, we, I think we all know that we have to look outside of healthcare. Although, you know, there are going to be jobs that, um, you know, might be appropriate, and um, IETs that might be appropriate in that in that sector. Um, but this is another chart that, you know, indicates the four and five star occupations requiring associate's degree. And I thought this was an interesting one because. In Massachusetts, you know, you, your IETs have to lead to, you know, a credential. So I thought this might be helpful. Um, and there's no five-star um, uh, uh, jobs on here, uh, but there's a lot of fours. So because it is four and five, right? So um, what? How might you use this um, chart? And are, do you see any any areas where you think maybe may, maybe that might be an IET area I I could focus on in my local area? It's a shot in the dark. I recognize you're not looking at your local area, but you you probably know about jobs there.
if if folks haven't picked up on it already, the the since the webinar, Carol's already enga engaging us in questions, um, and some folks find it harder to communicate in webinars. Just know we're we're going to be really relying on your participation in your groups and in the discussion on the on the uh, during the face to face. So this is a good warm up. Challenge yourself to, to use the technology for communication. And Terry has has given a, some input here. Yeah, thanks, Terry. Because I think that you hit the nail on the head. You know, this this really helps you to focus on on occupations that you that you might want to explore. Because um, and 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 maybe it even helps you do a little bit with career path development. Um, you know, because there's a lot of healthcare positions there, um, but but they're higher wage ones. So. I, I, that's one one way I might I might use this chart as well. Um, Claudine says it's a great idea to point out living wage jobs that do not require a four year degree. We need to educate the public more about this. Absolutely, good good point. Anybody else? I think there's also some other kinds of, you know, jobs that, um, you know, are, are interesting to pursue. The automotive, the um, the heating, the air conditioning. I think it also helps you um, think about what providers there are <laughs> in my area that, you know, might I might connect with to, um, you know, think about an IET. All right, any other things to um, share with this slide or any questions? All right, let's let's move on. And again, I, I picked this slide. I was really glad to see it in, in, in the local plans because it's it's an attempt to to look at at, at the um, you know jobs related to the career pathway and um, you know it also, you know, keeps with, you know, telling you the degree required, the bachelor's, their certificate, or the high school diploma, and, you know, the number, this is projecting the employment in those areas from 2014 to 24, and then it also shows you a very um, nice visual of the wages in the jobs, right? So. Of course, the more education, somebody made that point earlier, the more education you have, the tend, you know, tend to have higher paying jobs. All right. Um, and then this is um, a part of the uh, narrative in, in the local plan, and then it connects, um, you know, career pathways for adult basic education and then it, it, it's actually, you know, taking the, the career pathways information and mapping it out in terms of, you know, what kind of training, um, not what kind, but how much of training is, is needed. So I thought, I thought that would, that's very, very helpful. And you can see, too, in, in the narrative up, up here that, you know, the three priorities are healthcare, manufacturing, and finance. And so that that would be where where you would start with thinking about your IETs. All right. Go. That's great. All right. Any other questions before we move on? Any other comments? Thanks, Carol, for that comment. Yeah, I think it it, it is a pathway that many of our students um, want to pursue especially English language learners. Okay, so now um, we're going to take a, a little walk through ONET, and um, we're going to look at the occupation summary reports. And I think you'll see in, you know, a minute um, how useful these are to help you identify, you know, um, some of the skills that and and the competencies and um, the 
knowledge. Um, they even connect to training um, that may be um, needed to build your IETs. So I'm going to have um, Sandy's just got, she's right on the ONET um, homepage there. And she's going to type in um, certified nursing assistant, or yeah, certified nursing assistant. You, and then she's going to show you where we go. So here is the um, you know quick search for certified nur nursing assistants. It's a bright outlook. There's you know it, um, a, a lot of jobs related to it. Yep. Um, and I'm, before we move on, I'm going to also ask you, how many of you use ONET to help inform IETs? You, you might use it a lot for your students for career pathways, which is, or career exploration, which is really important. But has anybody used it to kind of inform the workforce preparation or workforce training skills for IETs? Fred does. Fred Yay, has his hand Fred. up. Thank you. Um, so these summary reports, the very first thing is it, it oops, sample oh. of reported job titles. So it gives you all the different, you know, the, the nursing, especially the nursing assistance field can have a lot of different, you know, things they call themselves. So this first thing tells you all the different types of job titles that might be, um, you know, used. And of course you, you know, verify that, that with your employers. Um, and then, you know, it tells you the tasks that are required for, um, you know, this job. And then if you look at 55 of 33 displayed and you click that on, you can see 35 different tasks. It just, it doesn't show you the whole thing. It hides the whole, whole lot, but it's very, very extensive. And of course, this helps you, you know, um, when you're doing IETs, you have to identify your target population, but this also, if when you're doing that, it, it will help you um, work with students to see if this is really something that they are interested in doing. Um, so you can go back, and when when you print out your, um, your summary reports for your assignment, we want you to print out the, the longer lists. Um, and then it, talks about knowledge and it kind of um, gives you a really good idea of what, you know, what kinds of information they need to have. And then it, it talks, it identifies the different skills um, that are needed for the job and the different abilities. These all help with the workforce preparation part of the IET. Again, they also help your students, inform your students about, you know, what they need to work on and, and be um, able to do. And then it goes through the work activities. Um, again, this is, you, you, when you get familiar with these, they, there's, there's a couple different categories, but they, I think I connect the work activities to the tasks too. These are kind of um, more specific information about the tasks that have to be done and, um, you know, what people have to like to, to do and, and be competent at. They even start to kind of yeah. uh, point to scenario, classroom scenarios and activities and simulations that you could do just looking at the, at the work activities. Yeah. And you know what, um, Sandy, will you go back up again yeah. and go to the technology mm -hmm. thing? Because I think the technology one, I mean, we need to <clears throat> do more in our, in, I'm, I'm, you know, in adult education, more related to digital literacy, it's a really good um, uh, list of different technology skills that are needed. Um, and of course, these are oh. going to be customized. Uh, oh, that's okay. It, <laughs> you know, you have to, uh, you know, relate this to your own employers. And 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 if you're doing an IET, I I would I would use this with employers to see what's um, needed in in your local workplaces, but it's a good starting point. Okay, and then, um, let's see, let's see there, and all the way down to work. We were at work activities when I had you, I think, scroll back up, but 
work context, it also talks a little bit, you know, about the work environment and what people have to, you know, they have to want to talk face to face with people and work closely with others and be in a lot of contact. It talks about the, the culture too. Um, okay, then the next thing, Sandy, um, go down to the job zone. Um, you know, it talks a little bit about, you know, what is needed um, related to uh, the high school diploma. And it tries to kind of generalize, um, you know, this job in association with other similar jobs or other occupations that have kind of similar tasks in them. Like bank teller is associated with this job and I'm not sure quite why, but it is. <laughs> um, and then you can see other job examples like orderlies, forest fighters, customer service representatives, security guards, upholsterers. That one surprises me. Um, and, and bank tellers. Um, so then it tells the next, the education that is required for um, this job, um, either high school or a post-secondary um, certificate. And then it helps you find training. And I think this is like one way to identify local um, providers to do the workforce training. So you want to click on that, that yeah, button. Pause for just a second. Oh. Claudine asked, what is SVP range? And I don't, I feel like I, oh, SVP range. I don't know. It's right here. I do not know oh, the answer that to that question. For it, right here. Anybody yeah. know? I'll have to look that one up. I'll have to look that one up. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't even think of what the, and I never, I use this a lot and I think I don't never, ever notice it. Maybe I just ignore it because I don't know what it is and it hasn't been information I'm looking for, but we'll all get on that. Yeah, that'll be one we um, bring to May 9th. Good question. Oh, here comes Shirley. Oh, Shirley just Googled it. Of course we, thank you, Shirley. Oh, thank you, yeah. <laughs> it's the amount of time needed to learn the techniques, acquire the information, and develop the facility for average performance in a specific job worker situation. So I wonder what that stands then what is, for. What's the well, unit? Four, yeah, what's four, the unit of measurement, the amount of time needed to learn? Like four to four six months. Hmm. Well, this is a good one to look up a little bit more too, so keep on Googling there. <laughs> okay, and we'll keep going. Is it, do I yes. have to find training now? Yes, find training. And then, um, then you can see the different areas that provide training. And like I said, I, I, I would bet there are more than those. Um, but they're the ones on the list. And it tells you, you know, about how much time. And all right. So back, stop sharing now? Do you yep, I think that's enough. I mean, does anyone have it? I think you get a, an idea about, you know, um, you know, what's there and what to bring and what to look for. And we'll talk more about how to use it on May 9th. It also gives, we didn't, we didn't go there, but there is, it gives you information about the wages. And you can, you know, drill down the wages in your state as well and local areas. So what other information do you need to make decisions about developing an IET? And let me just Are there say any other like sources of information that you need to? Um... I just want to say one thing about it, just so folks don't feel like if you w this is a brainstorm to make sure we're really thinking most broadly. You're not committing yourself to getting that information from that source before the session on May 9th. So yeah. don't let that don't let that restrain you. This is just to make to think more broadly, not yeah. to prepare for May 9th. <laughs> 
Good point. And, and the <laughs> other point is, like, these aren't the only sources of information for an IET, you know, that the local plan or the um, the ONET. Um, so it was just, yeah. Go take, take a few moments to think about sources of information. We'll, we'll watch the chat and also watch for hand raises. So I, I'm going to say one right now, which is uh, since we just looked at the training provider list, those might be folks that you could partner with, but they're also people you could just get inf more information from about really what does training involve and what kind of learning environment does it take place in and just in terms of assessing whether it's the right fit for you. So training providers and training institutions. So there's a question, how do we effectively choose and prepare students to enroll in an IET? And yeah, the many. I, um, so you have many students that, um, no, wait, I can't. We've gotten many students who are overqualified for their advanced manufacturing. College graduate supply is what Terry's saying. Oh, yes, yeah. see um, then, that, I mean, then the I. And I said, we start in determining the IET with the jobs and the target population. And and it's hard sometimes to get those two to come together. So IETs do not need to be done if you don't have a group of people who need training, who also need basic skills development. And sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes you can, you know, recruit from your existing students, but sometimes it is, you know, getting um, the word out to other people and recruiting more individuals. So, you know, it, it, it's 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 a process of planning, I think, that takes, you know, a, a really long time. It takes, you know, several months to figure out what workforce training is needed related to jobs that are available, that are appropriate for basic skills students and identifying who those individuals are either in your classes or in your communities and then developing, in some cases you're developing an IET for a new group of people that you may not have worked with. And I think, you know, it's, it's, this is why the workforce training part of the IET has a lot of um, different options for where you can um, do the workforce training. So you could do an IET in the workplace. And that's, I think, goes back to, you know, Sandy and communicating with employers. There may be employers that have, you know, people that are already working that they want to um, uh, promote or um, provide skills upgrade training that but they don't have the basic skills to succeed in it that would be an appropriate place to do an IET does that answer your question it, you see I, I, what I'm learning with IETs is you have to think outside that it, it's a, it's a whole new process and a way of thinking about serving basic skills or language students, and um, you know, it's 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 a, a planning process that takes a lot of consideration of different factors, and we will definitely go through all of this on May 9th. And I might even add, Carol, based on what you're saying and my own experience about it, it, it you may not be designing for your students. You may be designing for basic skills and basic language residents, and I, that's the, like people in your communities where you know there's a need and a demand, but who haven't come to your program for uh, adult ed, maybe because they are focused on the workforce and don't understand the connection. So. Um, as Carol said, it may be designing for what you understand about your community, but not necessarily the students who are enroll, enrolled, or at least not until they learn more about what the program has to offer and what, what the career pathways are, which kind of points back to with the students already enrolled in your program, as well as community residents, there's always a, that, that career awareness and uh, 
information that's necessary so people even understand what, what do these jobs entail and, and what opportunities might there be for me in them. Yeah, and, and that, that happens with recruitment as well, whether it's internal recruitment or external recruitment, I think. Go ahead, and that's, sorry, that's exactly right, Sandy. Exactly right. It it it's you you may be doing this in the context a new context with new partners and students you haven't worked with before. That has been our experience. We are sometimes able to put our existing students into the training, but um, you know, it, it, there's also new students that are um, that we're working with that we haven't before. I, the, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I and I will mention it at the um, May 9th thing. Sometimes the IAT isn't appropriate, and sometimes it's better to do a bridge program. Um, you know, to get some somebody ready for an IET. So we'll talk a lot about that um, next month. And yep, I know the, 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 the training and the process and, 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 and working through it, um, Terry, it, it does generate a lot of questions. It's complicated. There's a lot of moving parts. Any, any other questions or thoughts about this discussion, what other information you need? So um, should we go to the next slide? Oh, so there's Bonnie is asking, yeah, a question about uh, Mass uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed and expecting each region to have an IET. That's, we're not going to, uh, that's, that's not our information to explore or discuss. I, I haven't heard and I don't, and I don't know. Um, and, and we're going to really focus on uh, <coughs> practice and design and, and leave the policies to the policy makers and, and um, stay. thanks, Claudia, and I understand that you had to ask. and, and I'm going to keep on deflecting those questions throughout uh, the day on, in May as well. So there, here's, here's a, a really um, a good list of the different sources of information that, you know, you want to make sure that you are taking into consideration when you're developing IETs, you're looking at your local WIOA plans, you're working with your workforce development board, oftentimes if you're trying to get funding for the training part, for Title I at least, they have to be on, on board. You're working with your career center staff. They, they, they have um, access to um, a lot of information about business needs at, um, and, and employers. And, you know, they also have local labor market information that, at least they do in our state, I would assume they do in, in your state, that, you know, our business services team is always meeting with employers and, and trying to find out, you know, what um, jobs uh, are, are available and if there's, um, you know, basic skills requirements related to that job, if they can't fill those jobs. And we work really close, closely with our business ser services team in Pennsylvania, and I would assume that you would, you would do the same. Um, they, they also help us recruit, um, you know, individuals for the IETs. Um, so they're a, a really important part, partner. And then, of course, the training providers. Um, it, it's doing an IET. Is, there's at least three, um, three or four integral partners that have to be at the table all the time, in my opinion. Um, and and it's the this you know your workforce development oversight your career center staff your training providers and the adult education providers and the employers so that's that's five <laughs> people that are, are different entities that are working together um, to develop the IET and then workers in in targeted occupations um, if you're doing um, workplace. IETs. Is that, 
Sandy, do you have anything oh, that you to add? I meant even just folks, you know, like doing informational interviews or um, people you know in your community, just kind of as inside experts, getting kind of the inside scoop from them, or even students who are working in those occupations already. That's what I meant, even if you weren't in the workplace itself. So any other um, ideas to add to, um, you know, this list or thoughts, questions? Why don't we go ahead and review the um, preparation, and then there'll be a little time for questions as well after that. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yep. So, um, so remember to um, you know look at your WIOA local plans. I think somebody earlier I saw in the chat wanted us to go back and go through I, the link. It, it, am I, I right? Put the link in, and yep. then I put the link in the chat. So okay. hopefully, uh, I think it oh. was. Um, I can't remember who asked for it, but the link is in the chat now and it will also be in these slides and we'll be sending them out. Yeah. And then identify the two high growth occupations that you two that you think might be suitable for an IET and do your um, print out your summary reports on ONET related to those occupations and bring them with you. And then um, the next part of the um, assignment is to read at least one of the eight profiles featured in integrated education and training, implementing programs in diverse contexts, and here's the link to that, or view one of the three NCTN webinar recording, recordings that are on this link. And as Sandy said, she's going to send um, the slides out to everybody and uh, you'll have this information for um, prep for the May 9th meeting. And I wanted to just show where those, um, so of course we've showed, we've shown you where the plans are and you'll have the link and we went over ONET. And I do want to say, Carol, we didn't discuss this, but if folks are further along um, with information, like if they've already gone to their plan and worked with and talked with, you know, reps from their, their board, they can just start pulling together the summary report, um, right, if they have already gathered that information since some people said they had, been, had already seen their plans, of course, you, you, you can go ahead um, Absolutely. and then pull the, and if you started already, already gathering information more directly from other industry experts, that's great to have that, but I think still bring the summary report so you have something that's all in one place like that. Um, let me just show you where the, uh, I wanted to show you where the, um, those other documents are. So, um, one, they're both on the National College Transition website, and the links are there. Oh, I need to get my screen pulled up. Um, here is the, uh, I'm really having trouble getting out of, sorry, everybody. There it is. Okay, I wanted to show the first one. The first one is this, um, guide called Integrated Education and Training, Implementing Programs in Diverse Context. It's different from the guide that Carol has worked on that we're going to be working with in May. This is all um, not really tools for development, but it is uh, profiles and descriptions of 10 really different um, IET programs around the country really focused on, our, our focus was on understanding how is yours different from How's LaGuardia different from Northeast Mississippi, different from Community Action in Central Texas? How did you design it based on sort of the things Carol's talked about, your students, the labor market information, the partners available to you, your, your kind of resources in your community? So we wanted you to get, we're not going to have time to bring in folks who have been uh, experienced IET providers, so this is a great way for you to get some kind of further background and, and prompt your thinking about your own design. So read at least one of these um, profile descriptions and uh, that's where you'll find it and we'll send the link. And then if you're tired of reading and you want to listen to a recording, uh, another webinar recording, we also, in advance of publishing the, the guide that I just showed you, we did a, a webinar series, again, with that same focus on um, identifying kind of uh, unique contexts and settings and how that affects uh, IET design. So this was a series of webinars. There's three different um, 
topics implementing IET in rural settings, IET within ESL programs, and contextualized variations of IBEST. And I do want to say that in both the guide and in implementing, I think it's in ESL programs, one really unique focus is on IET for entrepreneurial, uh, entre entrepreneurship, and uh, a lot of us talk about, especially with, with uh, immigrants and also in rural communities, people who really want to go into their own businesses. And there's, so if that's something you're interested in, there is an IET for that that you might look to as a model. So that's where these um, are. And um, again, you'll, we'll share the links. But uh, you're welcome to read as many as you want of the profiles. And of course, you're welcome to view um, all of the webinars. But come at least having explored how other folks are doing this work in other parts of the country. And in Massachusetts, the Massachusetts programs are featured as well. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> and, and we have the next steps, do we? Yeah. OK. Oh, I'll go ahead then. So yeah. review the assignment steps. Um, as I think I said earlier, if you've got colleagues who are joining you on May 9th but weren't able to make it today, please share this information. Include them in your uh, preparation activities for the day. And then that's just the the information about the day itself. Um, and then I think all of you have been to the um, calendar, which is where you would have signed up for this webinar. But if you want, if you need additional information about the venue or the description, or if you've got more folks that want to sign up, that's where you'll find that information. And now is the last, last chance for wrap up questions before we move forward. So the question is, is MassCIS a good source? I'm familiar with it since I've worked with this site with students more so than ONET. So um, we chose ONET. We chose ONET. One reason that at least I think I, we chose ONET is that in that uh, summary report, everything is sort of dumped into one long, long, long page. I mean, you can select different things you want to feature or expand. And in MassCIS, it's screen by screen by screen to, to get that. So it's very similar information, and I, I would encourage you to compare what you find on ONET to MassCIS, but we just thought it might be a little bit more. The, the kind of information you're gathering is not state-specific. The summary report in terms of the skills and the um, tools used and the you know daily tasks that Carol reviewed, those aren't really so lo locally based until you really go out and talk to employers and training providers locally. So um, I'd say you, you can use MassCIS, but it might be great for you to get to know ONET as well, and, and just functionality-wise, it would be easier to print and bring. Um, the slides will be mailed, emailed to you either later today or, or tomorrow. Specific, specific, yep. Oh, spe <laughs> we're still on the SVP. Specific yes. vocational preparation, amount of time needed to su successfully train in a specific tech area occupation. I'll have to study that more and to Carol's question about what's the unit of measurement. Um, this is going to perplex me a little while. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. What a good group. I can't wait to meet you all in person. and. Um, and I see another high growth and family sustaining wage occupations do not overlap completely. Does okay. one of these have a higher priority in IETs and or WIOA? Um, you're, you are so right. Yeah. <laughs> and they almost rarely um, overlap. <laughs> <laughs> Except for um, some, you know. <laughs> Yeah. And in, I, my answer to that is, is working with employers and with um, my workforce uh, partners. Um, in Pennsylvania, we have to start there, and that's where we start. And that's why the career ladder is so important, or the career pathway is so important. Um, because, you know, you, you don't get higher pay um, too often without having the education. So, you know, it's a, it's a matter of helping your students see, you know, that 
a job that they, you know, get if the IET might be the first step <laughs> sometimes. And it, you know, I think it's helping them see, you know, what the first step is and the next step is, um, and helping them see what the career pathway is. It's a great question, and yeah. and 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 that is a um, a real answer. That's you know not you know they. It's not a great answer because <laughs> it the situation is so I think difficult to to deal with. Do you have any, um, Sandy? Any? No, I agree with you. Than that. <laughs> well, I agree with you that, the, that that's where the pathway is so important, and I think you're right, Fred. I mean, I think they rarely overlap the high growth and the family sustaining wages, thus the large numbers of retail jobs that many retail and service jobs, and um, and you know the certified nursing assistant. But as but as Kat, Carol said, if you can find and build a pathway and work towards that and, and look at kind of uh, pathways of transferable skills, even if somebody leaves a particular sector. I think that's in some, and, and then in some cases you can find high growth and family sustaining wages, but it really depends on the, the region, of course. So I think those are local decisions if you have to sort of trade one for the other in the short term and keep a vision of the long term, but I think they're very, they're local decisions and kind of based on your core values and missions in some ways too, as well as your labor market and your students and your employer partnerships. You I mean, I think the, the manufacturing area might, you know, yeah. have, um, you know, a, a career pathway where you can get the family sustaining wages a little bit sooner rather than later. Right. Um, but, you know, again, here's the, you know, the moving part, the stars have to align. You don't always have the students who want to do those jobs. Yeah. So, um, you, you, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process that, that takes a, a lot of planning and a lot of work. Yep. And, and your example is a great one, Carol, because Massachusetts is a state in many of our regions with a high growth in manufacturing and and a, and a big sell to help people understand what manufacturing is about. Claudine, I hope we'll get to explore your comment more and your observations in the May 9th training about work culture and um, Terry's talking a little, talking about, uh, so, so I think these are going to be great questions and uh, background knowledge for really rich discussions on um, on May 9th. Carol, anything else you want people to know or that you would like to hear from folks about before we before we end today? No, I I I I agree. Bring these um, questions and thoughts with, and you know whatever um, information you have to help you um, you know. Um, think about the IET that that you want to develop or want to refine. If there's one that you've worked on, but you you want to make it better, that's okay too. Right. With that, I'm going to uh, give you a round of virtual applause. Well, it's real. It's heartfelt and genuine, but <laughs> we won't necessarily all hear it, Carol. And and thank you so much. And we're really looking forward to May 9th. And um, folks, you'll get, you know, by tomorrow, the, the recording and the slides and the uh, links to the materials that you'll need for your prep activity. And if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to contact me about the prep activity. And I've also put my colleague, Ruzitsa Banovich's contact here. That's the person you've heard from about your registration, and she manages all of our enrollment. So you can reach out to her or reach out to me, like I said, about the activity, and I didn't put my contact information anywhere. And we'll really look forward to seeing you when it's a little uh, kinder and gentler weather out there. <laughs> By May 9th, we're sure to have hit 50 anyway, right? So <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah, we have snow here. <laughs> yeah, we're still in the 30s. All right, everybody, have a great afternoon, and thanks so much. Thank you. See you soon.